April 19, 1775 was one of the most important days in our country's history. Today, I'd like to read a story. The title is Sam the Minuteman, and it was written by Nathaniel Benchley and illustrated by Arnold Lobel. The first page of the story shows what Somerville, which was known as Charlestown at that time, may have looked like. It was mostly farmland with a few homes and mostly pasture for animals to graze. 245 years ago, a boy named Sam Brown lived with his parents on a farm in Lexington, Massachusetts, near Boston. At that time, America was not a country of its own. It belonged to England. The farm was small and the earth was rocky. Sam and his father did most of the outdoor work together. Sam's mother worked indoors. Everything they needed, they had to make or grow or cook for themselves. Life was very busy. Once in Boston, Sam and his father saw the soldiers the British king had sent to keep order. The people were very unhappy with the way things were being run by the king. Sometimes they had riots. Some people hid guns and powder in case of trouble with the soldiers. They didn't like the soldiers very much. They called them lobster backs because of their red coats. On their way home, Sam asked, Why do these soldiers, what do these soldiers want? They want to keep us from being too strong, said his father. They're afraid of us. That makes us even, said Sam. I'm afraid of them. Sam and his dad riding home. One night in early spring, Sam was awakened by the sound of church bells ringing. What's this, he thought. It can't be Sunday yet. Why would the church bells be ringing in the middle of the night? He went to the window. In the darkness, he could see men running. They seemed to be coming from everywhere. He heard the voices of his mother and father. His mother sounded frightened. Sam knew there was trouble. He dressed quickly and went downstairs. What's going on, he asked. Go back to bed, his mother said. No, said his father. We need everyone we can get. His father was a minute man, which meant he had to be ready for trouble at a minute's notice. Get your gun, Sam, he said. Why, asked Sam, what's happening? Nobody knows for sure, his father said. The British have left Boston and they're coming this way. Who told you, asked Sam. He hoped it wasn't true. Paul Revere, said his father. Now get your gun. Guns in those days were called muskets. So Sam got his gun and followed his father through the darkness to the village green. The bells were still ringing, and a drum was making a rattling sound. Sam felt cold and afraid. How do you think you would have felt? Captain Parker, head of the Minutemen, told them to line up near the meeting house. Sam saw his friend John Allen. John looked the way Sam felt, which made Sam feel a little better. Why are the British coming, Sam asked. They want guns and powder. It's hidden in Concord, said John, and they have to come past us to get it. Slowly, it began to get light. The drums and the bells stopped. It was so quiet. Sam could hear the birds twittering in the trees. He could smell the apple blossoms, and he could feel the wet dew on the grass. Maybe they won't come after all, he said to John. Maybe they'll go another way. Maybe, said John, but it's not likely. It sounded like they were worried. 
Then it was daylight. The men began to relax. Some of them even yawned. Sam's father talked with friends. Sam and John played some games with a knife in the grass. Sam wished that he had eaten breakfast. Suddenly, John said, listen. What do you think they heard? They listened, and in the distance they could hear the sound of marching feet. Tramp, 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 tramp. And then, over the hill and past the tavern came the soldiers. They came on and on and on. Sam could see their red coats and the sun glinting on their bayonets. They looked like a bright river of red. Here comes the king's soldiers. As they came closer, Captain Parker tried to count them. There must be a thousand and he only had 80 minute men. There are too many of them, he said. We better move away. I'm all for that, said Sam. I think I'll get on home. Me too, said John. There's nothing I can do here. Sam and John and their fathers and the other minute men began to move off. I'll see you after breakfast, Sam said to John. Then he saw a British officer who was shouting and waving his sword. I wonder what he wants. He wants us to disperse, said John. I'm dispersing as fast as I can, said Sam. He doesn't need to shout. Then someone, somewhere, fired a gun. Bang! The troops began to shoot. Minutemen fell all around. Sam, John cried, I'm hit. John held his leg and fell down. The British officer made his troops stop shooting and got them back in line. He marched them off toward Concord, leaving eight dead minute men. Sam and his father helped John's father take him home. Sam felt he was having a bad dream. He saw John's mother crying and she put a bandage on his leg. How does it feel, Sam asked. Not too good, said John. When Sam and his father got to their house, all Sam's fear changed to anger. How did they dare do that, he cried. If they come back, I'll shoot every one of them. Be quiet, his father said, washing the grit and powder off his face. You may just have that chance. He will not, said his mother. He does not leave this house again. And then the bells began to ring again. The troops were back. Sam, you stay here, said his mother. But Sam had already grabbed his gun and ran outside. His father followed close behind. By now, more and more farmers had come from all around. They were shooting at the soldiers as they marched. They never got in close, but fired from behind rocks and trees. This worked better than meeting them out in the open. So as the British were returning from Concord, heading back to Boston, the Minutemen were ready and waiting for them. Then more British troops came out of Boston. For a while, the battle was quite heavy. The British troops burned some houses, but their hearts really weren't in it. Soon they had headed back to Boston, followed on all sides by farmers whose bullets buzzed about them like bees. Late that night, Sam and his father got back home. The rain was falling gently. Where have you been, Sam's mother said. I've been so worried about you. But Sam was too tired to answer. 
All he wanted to do now was sleep. No one knew it then, but that day was the start of the American Revolution. The war lasted eight years. At the end, America was a country on its own. But Sam didn't think about that. He thought about John and wondered how he was. And then he slept. So on this Patriot's Day, on Sunday, let us remember the men and boys and women who fought so hard for us to have our freedom 245 years ago.